I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of my journey into Tableau and just some of the ways that I've learned to um, enable Tableau kind of organizationally, but also at a micro level and how to empower business users, right? Like really build this community. And I think that's why we're all here at a, as a user group, right? Because we're all inspired by the community. Um, so along with that, I also wanted to share some of the journey that Carter's has been through. So it's a little bit about me. I, that was a great intro. Um, I've been through this journey a few times, right? Like even before I started leading COEs, which uh, the first time I had uh, started one was at NCR and the finance organization, I did this like grassroots kind of thing at um, Georgia State where I was doing research and they were, so it was a, it, it was a little research organization within the, um, the, the university and we were doing a lot of coding we were doing a lot of analysis a lot of research and writing and we were having a hard time conveying those results and conveying that research to our stakeholders right because it's like nobody's gonna read a 30 page research paper <laughs> um and even the the executive overview was really long and so that's when that's really what kind of sparked my interest in tableau and visual analytics and uh that's how I started my journey and kind of uh, storytelling through visual analytics and data. And I learned that the best way to evangelize that was through like, through lunch and learns, through like championing some of the work that I had been doing, right? And like the starting to build this community. And so what I'm gonna talk about today even if you don't have a COE within your organization, if you don't lead a COE, um, there are a lot of these practices that I'm going to share, you can start to incorporate into your day-to-day -day practices to really make a change at your organization along your Tableau journey, right? So um, I, again, from a macro level organization-wide to a micro level within your team or within your own personal journey, I think a lot of the learnings that I'm going to share with you guys can be applied. So a little bit about Carter's journey. Um, we started our journey into Tableau in 2019. Um, we had, before that, before we even introduced Tableau to the organization, we had really central governance. And what that means is that we had a BI team that owned all of the data and reporting. Um, and that was done through MicroStrategy. And MicroStrategy was how most of our business users were accessing data. So they would go into MicroStrategy, they would access reports that were built by the BI team, and then they would export that into Excel and they would do a bunch of um, manual manipulation and then like serve up reporting to leadership through Excel, all of which was super cumbersome, super manual, right? And we, when we first started, we bought 20 creator licenses and I think maybe like 100 viewer licenses in 2019. And I had a little COE made up of two people, so me and a developer. Um, actually, it was three. We had another, we had a data engineer who is really focused on kind of building out these uh, data domains for our business users. And we were really on a mission of like helping people evolve, right, from these manual processes into automating uh, their reports. So fast forward to now, we have 100 creators, 140 explorers. So they're very similar to what a creator or a developer can do. So you think, think about like 240 developers, business developers in Tableau that are licensed and enabled the same way that traditionally a BI team would be, um, that have the same tools and technology to own and develop, right? Uh, visual analytics, reporting, flows, right? All of that for their own business teams. Um, so it's really been an amazing journey. And I'm going to kind of walk you through how we did it. Um, and on the left side, if, if, our, so we've been having some trouble with our Tableau server. Um, if it's up and running and good, I will show you a little bit of our governance model. Um, and on the left side, this is an example of how we kind of showcase the reports that are owned both by the BI team and the business teams um, on our portal. 
But before we get into that, I kind of want to talk about why it's important. Like why is self-service so important to us um, and why it should be important to you? And the reason is because you can't scale without self-service, right? Um, and I, I bring this Gartner chart up, even though it's actually pretty old. I bring it up all the time and I talk about up and to the right. Um, and it's it's about how the the most valuable things are actually pretty difficult to achieve. Um, so, you know, the optimization, the foresight, prescriptive analytics, that's hard to do. And that takes a lot of time. And we can't get there if we're focused on like doing descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics, right? Telling our business leaders what happened and drilling into why did it happen very manually, right? Like we can't scale into up into the right if we're so focused here because we're not enabling self-service. And so self-service has a very, very important part in our analytic maturity. So again, if you're thinking about how is this relevant to me and my journey or me and my organization, just ask yourself where in this journey you are, right? And how you can scale to get up and to the right. I know that when I first started at Carter's, even at NCR, which was a huge organization, um, we were kind of down here, right? A lot of the work that we were doing was manual. And so we had to really focus on enabling self-service analytics to start pushing our organization uh, into that analytic maturity by saving time. All right, so the role of the COE is to enable users to accelerate and innovate, to set standards and best practices, and to champion change. Now, you don't have to have a COE. You don't have to lead a COE to do this, right? You can do this, again, at a grassroots level within your team, within your organization. You can start your own little user group um, to do this. But it's super important that as you're kind of beginning your journey into Tableau, that you're thinking about kind of how you do this strategically. And that's a lot of what my job is, like the COE leader is, right? Like I think about the journey that we're taking and making sure that we're taking the right steps to get up into the right. So I'm thinking about how do I enable users appropriately with the right tools and technology? So getting uh, licenses into the right developer's hands, right? Making sure everybody has licenses that need them, accelerating uh, different development if we don't have teams that are equipped, um, and then innovating. So some of these new features that are coming out, right? Sometimes we have to create dashboards that incorporate those features to really kind of do a POC, prove out the concept of them, um, and then share that out with our business users so that they can start to see the value of them and start leveraging them more. A big part of what we're doing is setting standards and best practices too. So uh, what you see here on the left side is our SharePoint site, and this is how we communicate a lot of the work that we're doing with our Tableau community internally. Um, and the, the more that we do this, the better the community gets. And again, the higher that bar gets so that our, like the standards are higher, right? So the dashboards look better, they're, uh, they're sharper. So a lot of that work um, and, and championing change comes through the best practices and setting standards. And you don't have to have a COE to do this, but the COE helps you accelerate that change. Um, so now I'm going to kind of give you some tactical ways to do this. And this is how I started to frame my personal journey into Tableau. When I started to think, okay, I really want to start getting good at Tableau. I really want to start incorporating this into my day-to-day -day work. And I want to start making my organization more analytically mature with Tableau. What do I do? Like, what's the first step that I take? And this is how I recommend this to any team that's starting to work with the COE. The first thing that I always recommend is automate. I automate manual data wrangling and report creation because that's the fastest way to prove value. This is where you're gonna save a lot of time, right? Like it's like that upfront investment of time that can be uh, that's going to be saved and then reinvested in higher value work. If your organization has a Tableau suite of Tableau, Tableau Prep, and then something like Tableau Server, or Tableau Online, you are in like 
the best spot ever because you really had all the pieces in place to automate your workflows. So what we did when we first started the COE and started our journey with uh, Tableau is we started working one-on-one -on -one with business teams. So again, this, if you don't have a COE, this could be you working with your leaders within your organization, right? Or your functional groups to say, okay, I have this one report that I'm doing manually. I'm creating it manually. I want to automate this. Um, let's walk through the process and I'm going to actually map this out through Tableau. This is what we did as the COE with some of our functional groups. We sat with them, we partnered with them, and we kind of built this hybrid team, right? Bridging the gap between business and IT. And we would walk through their process. So they would show us the manual manipulation that they would do in Excel, and we would show them how to do that in Tableau or Tableau Prep. And essentially what we would end up with is an automated flow in Tableau Prep that would be automated through Tableau Server, and then a report that would be served up through Tableau. And then we would take it even a step further where we would uh, have automated report delivery through um, subscriptions, right? And again, that's leveraging the power of Tableau Server. But we would do this through like a series of working sessions on a weekly basis, really sitting with them, understanding their use case, understanding the steps that they would take, right? Uh, to create these uh, reports or these analysis manually, and then walking them through how to do it automatically through Tableau. The benefit of doing something like this is uh, the knowledge transfer that we were able to do. So we would always partner on the first project. It would take, you know, we would kind of skip it for a quarter or two, but then we would enable that team to take it further, right, in the next project or the subsequent project. So hands-on the first time, do a lot of knowledge transfer a lot of partnership, but we're enabling them in the long run so that they can self-serve going forward. And those teams are more equipped, right, to help their teams and to evangelize that change. So automation is really the first step that we always took with our teams. And we always partnered along the process. But the best part about that was that we would partner, enable them, and then kind of set them free. So always teaching them how to fish. And then the second thing that we worked to do was to democratize. So as we started to work with different teams, we started to identify common use cases. And I started to kind of see this as the 80-20, right? Um, about 80% of these questions could have been answered with 20% of the data, right? Or 20% of the dashboards, I would say. So I uh, started to think, how could we democratize or really reduce redundancy around the, the requests that we were getting. So we started to build these certified data sets. And for us, what that meant was we were gonna be able to enable self-service even faster because we had data that was on the server, easy to access and trusted, right? So our users could go access the data and start doing their own development really quickly without having to do the data development themselves. Um, and then, Something else that we also started to really encourage as we were doing these one-on-one -on -one transformations with the teams were we would we would really encourage interactivity within the analysis because what that would encourage then is the self-service consumption, right? Instead of leaders consuming a dashboard or you know some executive overview of a dashboard and then asking questions of the developer. They could start to drill into those dashboards, they could toggle filters, and they could really self-service, again, leaving that developer alone uh, to do more of that complex development that would take more time, right? Um, and then another thing that really kind of came through all of this is we were democratizing data and then democratizing our dashboards. So really sharing those dashboards was that we would like socialize all of this. And a part of that came from that portal that I was showing at the first slide. So I'll show that again. Fingers crossed that our server is up. Um, but a lot of that it comes from the, the democratization, right? So like sharing your insights, sharing those data sets, giving it a stamp of approval. Um, what you see here is actually a matrix that I use as I work with those teams. So as, uh, as the COE takes um, project requests from the business leaders, I have this up on the board and we talk about like how feasible is this use case, this request, right? 
Um, can we really make it happen? And how valuable is it? Can we quantify the business impact of making of answering your business question, right? Um, and if it if it falls within these gray charts or these gray bars, I don't do it. Like I don't take it in as a project. And uh, we always love for our projects to end up uh, with high feasibility and high value. And then we'll start to partner with the business teams, right? We'll start to partner with them on use cases and on data sets. Something that I didn't include here, but hopefully I'll be able to show you guys uh, if we switch over to the server, is that a part of the democratization, like I said, is certifying data sets so that our users know what data to use and what data to trust, but also we certify dashboards so that they know like this is the source of truth for you know retail sales or for um, website traffic and they get a logo so even if it's business owned it doesn't have to be owned by the bi team they get a logo uh, that that with the team's name so it also shows ownership that this can be trusted and so as teams start to share those dashboards there's a sense of trust there and that kind of leads me into my next piece of like how the COE can really enable self-service. Um, there's this idea of sprawl, right? Like as you as you um, enable self-service at your organization and you start kind of equipping people with these uh, tools, right? It can start to get a little bit like the wild, wild west. Um, and that's where governance comes into play. And actually, I, I didn't know if I should include this because I feel like this is always the the worst slide to include because people think this is the one where it's like uh, all the rules. <laughs> but uh, the way that I actually think about governance isn't about setting the rules as much as it is, again, about setting the standards and the norms and empowering users, right? So this is how we're going to be able to incorporate quality assurance into uh, the products that our business users are building really, this is how we end up empowering those business users with the right tools, training, best practices, so they don't feel like they're on an island alone. Um, and I'm going to show you guys kind of how we do that through our, our SharePoint. So on our SharePoint, we include training content, we include best practices such as style guides, and then we also have some uh, some content around gamification. Actually, we're launching a really robust gamification program next quarter, um, and this is really meant to like build a community. But the way that we kind of focus our governance isn't isn't to shut down or to like really put these guardrails around development. It's meant to empower users and to equip them so that they don't feel like they're alone, right? And kind of lost on an island, um, but that they're enabled and they have the right resources to do their development. And then the last way that we engage on enable self-service uh, is through community. So this is why, again, we're here. This is what Tableau has such an amazing community. And you don't have to have a COE to do this. You can do this as a gra at, at a grassroots level. But I think that um, the COE really helps accelerate um, engagement and community building. And again, that helps build standards, right, and helps raise the bar in terms of uh, the Tableau products that your organization builds. So these are some of the ways that we engage our organization or our community of developers through analytic summit, through lunch and learns. We've done a few of those. Um, we also host like Makeover Monday and Workout Wednesday where we'll just meet and then uh, like we, we introduce the challenge. So it's nothing new. It's nothing that we have to develop, right? We're just introducing the challenge that's online. Um, and then we have that hour to develop and then everybody goes on their own way and then they can continue the development on their own time and submit via Tableau Public. But again, it's a nice way to kind of start building that community and getting everybody on a call together. We do a lot of internal training and external training with our Tableau partners. And then something that you'll see on our SharePoint side is we do offer, offer office hours and then bookings, like one-on-one -on -one bookings, which were an extension of our um, quarterly like partnership projects. So as the teams became more equipped to self-service, so if you remember along this journey, we were really focused on partnering with these 
business teams to give them enough of the knowledge, enough tools to enable them to start building themselves and then kind of setting them free on their own, right, to do the development. As they became more uh, equipped to do that, they still needed a little bit of the support. And so what we did is we enabled booking so they can book one-on-one -on -one sessions with us. They could do doctor sessions, builder sessions, or production review sessions um, that wouldn't, right, they wouldn't be quarter long commitments with us, but they would still be dedicated time uh, for us to enable them. All right, so I'm gonna pop over to, okay, I'm like kind of scared to refresh this just because we've had some, uh, some issues, but this is our uh, portal. And the this really kind of serves as two things for us. So the first thing that this, this signals to us is it's our governance model. The um, If you click into, okay, let me see. If you click into each of these sections, it's going to show you the, um, the report name and then the report owner. So what that does is it gives ownership to, to the analysis, right, to the content. And again, that's how we enable trust across the organization. This is how we democratize content across the organization. Oh. Okay. And then the other thing that it does is it also helps us kind of uh, beyond just the certification democratization, it kind of serves as a nice landing page, a nice clearinghouse of the content that's certified on Tableau without users having to go through like explore or save a bunch of links or go through their email um, and the subscriptions. So I will not wait for this to load, but I wanted to kind of show you guys this is, this is our living, breathing governance document. Um, and this is how we both certify content that's business owned, BI owned, COE owned, and how we democratize that content. And then this is our Tableau SharePoint site. This is really how we evangelize um, and champion a lot of the work that we do that the business does. So down here, we have a lot of like, you know, training documentation. So I'll show you some of the content that we've built. So this is like a toolkit for viewers. We have one for explorers and creators. We have a style guide. And then we also have like a, a dashboard example of a style guide. And so it really sets kind of the best practices and sets the expectations for our viewers. We have how to's and some demos some recorded demos. And then here is where you can find the, the consultations, the office hours, and then the portal. And so the office hours will take them to a team's meeting. And then we also have some events that we host here. And then before I open to questions, something that I really, really wanted to kind of highlight as, um, again, this, this whole kind of conversation was about framing self-service or the journey into self-service, whether your organization has a COE, you lead a COE, or you're doing it all on your own. Um, as you begin your journey into Tableau, the best resource that I could recommend to you is the Tableau Blueprint. Um, we did this when we first started the journey at Carter's um, in 2019, and then we actually recently did this. And it was such an eye-opener because it kind of assesses you in four areas. So like data, analytics, culture, and I forgot, I think, and, and infrastructure. So kind of like the, the tech aspects of it. And then it also assesses you across uh, user types. So from like the practitioner level to the leadership level. So you'll you'll have your leader take this assessment, you'll take it. And it's such an interesting way to kind of think about are you in the are you in good shape, right? Or like where where should you kind of focus your work? So again, as you're kind of framing or as you're kind of thinking about what's the best way to start this journey, to really uh, the next steps in your Tableau journey and into self-service analytics, I couldn't recommend the blueprint enough. So I just wanted to kind of give a shout out there. And with that, I'll open it up for questions.
Thank you so much. Um, someone, Ivano, uh, said that they tried to initiate a Tableau CEO at their organization and governance topic is what stalled it. I know I've run into issues with that too when I've worked at other places, that governance portion. Um, so thank you for talking about how you guys kind of address that and, and move forward with it. It's super helpful. Yeah, I think that the, like I, I always am so iffy on talking about it because um, I, I, I think it's one of the ones that are one of the topics that are kind of boring <laughs> and <laughs> overlooked and people are like, oh, that's just, but it's so important because it's how you structure, right? Like, like that journey and how you structure and enable users. And so for me, instead of us taking away people's autonomy and building those reports, we really wanted to focus on like enabling them to do it well. Right. right. And so that's what that's how I kind of think about my role as like the COE leaders. I am here to kind of enable them and empower them to do their own development instead of taking away their ownership. Yeah. And it, it is so important. I mean, it's it's that thing that no one really wants to do, but it's vital to mm -hmm. ensuring that everything is met, whether, you know, different kinds of data, if there's, you know, legal protections around data, making sure that, you know, everything is being used in, in the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Um, another question just came through thoughts on an analytics center of excellence and how that overlaps with the Tableau center of excellence, such as who defines the metrics that matter. Yeah. So actually that's pretty interesting because I have led at NCR, I led a Tableau Center of Excellence that was really focused on like Tableau self-service um, within the finance organization. Then I came to Carter's and I lead the Analytics Center of Excellence. So I'm focused like on everything kind of, and including machine learning and all the tools and everything. Um, I think the overlap, the so. So the overlap is that like everything is data, right? And like you can't do Tableau without data and and analysis, right? Like that's that, that's the crux of it. Like it's data and analytics at its core. It's just the tool that you're using um, to do that. And so there's still these like best practices, standards, and norms that you're evangelizing within both centers, right? Um, and then there's this portion within a COE that's really focused on training, right? Like that's the enablement piece of it. I think within a Tableau Center of Excellence, you're focused on the tools training a lot more than at an analytics center of excellence, right? Because you're more focused on kind of like the, the use cases. Um, the analytics center of excellence seems very political and hard. So that's very true. And I will say that you can't do it without partnership. Um, and what we do actually, and I would recommend even if you lead like a Tableau Center of Excellence, which again is more tools based, at the core of it, it's data and analytics. What we do is we have three committees that we work with that are cross-functional. So that we're partnering with a bunch of different um, business leaders uh, or business practitioners. So we have a uh, Tableau or a analytics advisors committee that's made up of business leaders, but that are focused on analytics, right? So it's like analytics uh, business leaders. Then we have a committee of um, practitioners. So those are hands on keyboard, the best of the best, right? Um, data scientists, the best Tableau developers that we have um, in house, they're on that committee. And then we have an enablement committee. So that's like the BI team, some of the business team, some of my team that come together and we're actually like building out the content for, um, for our community. But, but like, if we didn't do that, it would be a lot of like stepping on toes. It would be a lot of like, oh no, I own this. I'm going to do this. Right. Um, so it's true that it's, it can get political, but I, I look at my job as enabling, empowering, and partnering. Um, so if you frame it like that, I think it, it can be a little bit different. 